we're doing positive education in several different ways with several different people, in part because we have people in different countries, uh, because that's the way the, the whole movement has come together. So we're going to spend some time with Sir Anthony Selden, who I've had the pleasure to meet and spend a day or two with, right, uh, about a year ago or so. And before we dig deeply into the positive education part of it, you and I seem to share an extraordinary, extraordinary degree of curiosity, and I have a feeling that takes us on the first stone on the path into positive education. So for those who aren't familiar, um, your background is astonishing. Uh, you've done a lot of stuff and I suspect the reason you've done it is because you love it. So color that in a bit for us. Well, Howard, it's very nice to be with you and on this uh, very important um, series that you have. So, we, we live our lives, don't we? And we then often work backwards and we, we give them a um, veneer of, of cohesion and uh, ideological coherence about how everything that we've done has been a logical progression towards uh, where we are now. And I'm sure I do that too. Um, and I think that uh, my life is like uh, everybody else's, which is that we're driven, um, I mean, that's fine to, to give it that kind of spurious uh, consistency, but I, I, I think it's more random than that. Uh, and my life has been a series of decisions based largely on unconscious, semi-understood uh, motivations. Uh, often reacting against something or being attracted to, to something that shifted. Um, but um, at some stage, I did decide that uh, education needed to be about much more than the passing of tests and exams and the uh, cognitive knowledge, and that there was a more holistic development for each person, child, student, uh, in terms of their wider character development, their wider skills and interests and aptitudes and pleasures in life. And I have tried to help make that happen. And in my own life, I've also tried to do things which ha ha have built rather than just taken short term pleasurable gains, but have been thinking about a, a longer term decision. Do you think you're especially, and I'm, I guess I'm asking the question for you and for me, do you think we're especially well suited to that kind of thinking? Or do you think, do you think that there is a, a natural tendency towards, well, I'm curious about a lot of things and there's a world out there and I want to learn as much as I can. And so will everybody else, or as I'm often accused, well, you're different. Ooh, another really good question. I, look, I, I think that, that, uh, children are naturally curious. They ask questions such as, you know, what's up there in the sky? What are those stars? I mean, are they a couple of miles away or are they more than that? Why is the sea deep? Um, why do people die? What, where do they go? Um, and, and I think the education system, which should be, nurturing and developing uh, and deepening that curiosity tends to bludgeon it out. Um, and it was a struggle for me to keep that interest going. So you know, it's hard to think of anything that I'm not interested in from the sciences, astronomy, philosophy, uh, to, to, to the arts, to social sciences. I find some things difficult to understand. Languages, philosophy, mathematics are three things I, I find difficult, but I'm interested in them. Uh, and Howard, I think that, um, that, 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 that we should be helping people to, to nurture that curiosity. We, we tend to think we need to teach creativity. Ken Robinson, who died last month, who gave this sensationally popular TED talk, um, was misunderstood as saying that it's about teaching creativity. It's not. It's about 
It's about not teaching the squashing of natural innate curiosity, which education systems the world over do uh, squeeze out um, from people. They destroy it often. Uh, and also the sense about, um, about joy. You know, there's, not, there's not a lot of joy in, in exams and, and tests. Do we take that apart because more people are learning individually now? We're in a position, at least in the United States, I suspect in Britain as well, where going to school is not a, uh, an easy task. Um, it's difficult to, to stay sane because you're not sure whether the person next to you is going to kill your family. So as a result, I think I'm going to just learn what I can, but not necessarily learn it through the institution. If we do that, does that burden move away? Well, COVID's ha had some good aspects um, and some less good aspects. And it's shown us that we are, if in as far as we ever doubted it, fundamentally social um, entities that, that, that we need touch, um, physical contact, physical proximity, uh, to feel fully alive and to feel that our isolation, our loneliness, uh, is being broken down. Um, where there are two and more people, there's laughter. It's difficult to laugh on one's own, and laughter is supremely valuable as long as it's not um, as long as it's not cruel laughter, which isn't laughter at all. Um, so, Hajj, yeah, sure, you know, uh, it's taught us uh, through digital learning and AI learning that um, we can learn a lot on our own. But, you know, I, that's what uh, students all the way back to ancient Assyria, the Tigris and Euphrates, um, back in what you call Iraq, whatever you call it. Um, uh, <laughs> and, and what do you call it? Iraq. Iraq. Ira, okay. Yeah. No, I mean uh, the, the 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 most successful people were were students were often learning themselves for themselves then, uh, and we were wrong to think that um, institutions are, are the sole purveyor of, of knowledge. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, and that's a good thing that that, that we we're learning how to learn, uh, and I think we're also learning a bit more about our bodies. And how outrageous that uh, schools and universities the world over have not taught people about the body. You know, how do you sit properly? How do you breathe deeply so that you don't get depressed or have anxiety attacks? How do you walk and, uh, uh, and lift so that you don't get lifelong back pain or, or pain in the, in the temples? How, how, how do we look after our stomach so we're not irritable? I mean, you know, the most basic things are just, are just machine gunned uh, by the education system uh, because you can't test and, uh, and grade people on it. Somewhere in here, and I, I of course, I agree with you and, and people who watch this regularly know that. Um, so we have this odd place where what I'd really like to see is sweeping out the curriculum entirely and work with the body, the mind, the community, um, and it, sort of concentric circles so that we actually care about the earth and the like, and, and that becomes a primary subject. I don't know that I care about math or electromagnets as core subjects that everybody needs to learn, but I think there's a long list of things that we do need to learn, and among them seems to be social emotional learning uh, and then somewhere in there there's a cousin called positive education so we may want to build that path and then as soon as we get to positive education we may want to take a quick break so i'm going to if i can disagree with you a half uh there howard uh, i think that learning about how our bodies work and and about relationships with others and why and how to nurture wholesome uh, good relationships um, and how to uh, avoid damaging ourselves and 
other people and the planet. I think these, these should all be a core part of education, but I think we should also be learning about electromagnetism and about math because they're true. Electromagnetism helps us to understand I mean, electromagnetism is going to happen whether we understand it or not, uh, because it's true and it's real, uh, as are numbers. Uh, and if we um, understand them, it isn't at the expense of understanding about our body and uh, holistic well being. Um, uh, I think we need both. I think we need both left and right brain uh, learning. But also, you know, it's just think of uh, uh, of um, school classes, high school classes, junior school classes across America. How much of the time is wasted because you have kids who are switched off, uh, resentful, um, and you know, maybe sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety percent of the school day is wasted because the kids are not engaged. Now, if we do positive education properly, they'll come into lessons in a much better frame of mind and the teachers will be much more able to connect because there'll be a sense of harmony between the teacher and the student and the Kids will have a sense of harmony within their bodies. Uh, their minds will be more harmonized with their bodies. Their emotions will be more harmonized with their minds. Uh, and there'll be a, a greater and a far quicker sense of, of, of learning. social emotional learning is a catchphrase that a lot of teachers seem to know but when I mention positive education they don't seem to know it so can you take us through where positive education fits in and begin to help us understand what the components are so giving something a label isn't always helpful and because it seems like something else one has to, to, to learn about. I mean, positive education, um, uh, happy, successful uh, young people and, uh, and uh, teaching faculty just do naturally because, as I understand it, positive education is about going with the grain of uh, the way that the, the mind works optimally, the emotions work, uh, the body works, and it, it's about uh, bringing out that natural point of harmony within ourselves and between ourselves and other people. So uh, how did it develop? Well, we can say quite precisely that it came out of the work of Professor Martin Seligman of the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, who um, asked, who, who became president of the American Psychological Association and posed as a, a core question, why is so much psychology focusing on what goes wrong? You know, what is unharmonious? Uh, what is not good, but bad? What is uh, not natural, but unnatural? Uh, what is not healthy but is diseased. So uh, psychology is full of studies of depression and eating disorders uh, and self-harming and substance abuse or other forms of 
uh, of um, uh, unhappy behavior. And he asked the question, where are the studies that have been conducted to look at not what goes wrong uh, within uh, young people, um, what goes wrong within relationships, uh, what goes wrong in institutions, but what goes right? I mean, why do some people naturally exude oh, you know, positive energy and love and affirmation and curiosity and wholeness and goodness and peace? You know, what is it about these people and why do some relationships? Uh, radiate um, a love uh, uh, and a light uh, that goes way beyond the relationship just to those two people that beacons out over other people. Why do some organizations, when you go into them, uh, some schools, some universities, some companies, some uh, stores, you just go in and bam, you just know that ooh, you know, this is feels good. Uh, and so the study, the field of positive education that comes out of positive psychology is looking at what are the, the common characteristics of um, uh, the, 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 these lives which are flourishing, big word for um, positive psychology, the relationships which are flourishing, the, uh, the institutions, the companies that are flourishing, the people that are flourishing, what are the common characteristics? And, you know, out of that uh, comes a field uh, uh, of theory that has then been tested uh, again and again and again. And we can say these things work uh, and they can have a transformative effect. Uh, and a lot of it is about unlearning what the school systems and sometimes unfortunate parenting i mean look maybe parents the best reasons um have just got it wrong you know and, and it's about unlearning and unraveling and undoing the harm that's been done so that we can get back to to, to live our lives in a much more natural uh, and wholesome way so uh that's it howard hang on um is that a course of study? It doesn't sound like a course of study. It sounds like the foundation blocks on which a school and education system would be built. So, yeah, so, so, so um, there's a body called IPEN, the International Positive Education Network, of which I'm president, that links schools and colleges uh, worldwide to the best uh, evidence based learning that shows what works best and what works best for uh, ch children who are five and six and what works better for, for 10 and 11 year olds and what works better for older uh, people and what works be best for uh, undergraduates. And 15 years ago at Harvard, there was Tal Ben Shahar who was picked up by the New York Times, who was teaching happiness, which turned out to be the most popular um, elective course that Harvard had run since the Second World War. And now you have Laurie Santos, Laurie Santos at the University of Yale, who is uh, packing out uh, the halls at Yale so that there's no room for students. This was before COVID. Um, so that they can learn about how they can make their lives uh, happier. So, you know, it, it's, uh, it's about agency, Howard. It, 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 the education system destroys agency. It often tells people what they can't do. So you don't think that you're good at electromagnetism. Howard, somewhere in your deep past somebody will have told you that Howard you, you're just no good at electromagnetism or no good at math uh, and then we believe this and it becomes a reality if someone had said you know you're really good at math you know so, so, so it's about um, it's about learning that we can have choices we do have efficacy um, just because you know today is like yesterday does not mean that tomorrow has to be like today and it will only be like today tomorrow will only be like today if we believe and therefore it's a lot about what we believe about ourselves uh, that matter 
So if we think we're going to get depressed by something, we will get depressed by it. If instead we say, okay, look, I'm beginning to feel a bit down. Um, I'm going to take a, a bottle or a glass of, this is vodka, by the way, here. Um, <laughs> and um, it's, like, it's actually water. We don't drink enough water, none of us. Um, and or most of us don't drink enough. Uh, uh, and so we have a drink and that's going to make you feel, us feel maybe good for a little while, but it's going to make us feel lousy. But if we actually get out, you know, put on a coat, the fall's coming, um, it's going to be winter, then it will be spring, everything is cyclical, you know, get outside, uh, you know, walk, uh, uh, get the heart rate up, get the lungs going we will feel better so we don't uh, it's about efficacy and we can teach it but you know is there a set program for you know nine-year-olds no but there are lots of things that schools and colleges can adapt to um, be suitable to that particular school and it's particular clientele so when you when you have your eye pen hat on yeah are you Spending time talking about how do we train teachers, how do we train students, how do we inject a very different way of thinking about education into the whole system? And because the teachers who will watch this, the parents who will watch this, will wonder about that specific practical question. How do I attach to this? So, uh, yes, I think it's important that we all begin with ourselves. So... Uh, parents watching, teachers watching. Uh, we, we, we should know as parents that our children don't listen to what we say to them or they don't listen very much. And teachers, that the students don't listen to you very much when you come to giving advice. What they do listen to is what you do. So if uh, parents are shouting out, you've got to be happy, you know, you know, well, come down, come down, you know, and you're obviously worked up. Uh, this doesn't work. Uh, we are hardwired to um, emulate the, the qualities that we see embodied in the person in authority. So whoever's listening to this, you have a real power to make your life uh, happier and healthier uh, during COVID and beyond um, and the lives of people around you. So, of course, in a school setting, it's important that the, uh, we call them head teachers, principals, um, uh, it's important that they get it because if, you know, they are the most important single person in the school, um, but they might not get it. And if they're not going to get it, they probably won't get it ever, maybe, or not for some time. But that doesn't mean that parents and teachers can't do things themselves so i mean howard you know there's some very basic things to to do and 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 one is you know to start being more appreciative uh it's very very energy sapping to you know to to be with people who who are critical um who are endlessly criticizing politicians politicians or COVID or the weather or uh, people in authority, it, 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 it is not dignified. It's not in any sense ennobling to, to be with people who are like that. Um, what is uplifting and inspiring is to be with people who, despite huge adversity, have the... Um, uh, the efficacy uh, and the humanity to rise above it um, and to um, make the most of things uh, and to, to to be appreciative for what they have. I mean, look, the, you know, we have so much in the UK and uh, in the US. Of course, there's relative poverty, extreme in both countries, but um, whatever we are, wherever we are on an economic scale, there's a lot that we have to be grateful for. Um, and that habit of gratitude um, and can be learned. Uh, and the more we can learn it, 
the happier we'll become and the more people will be attracted to us. Um, so, you know, that's a, a, a simple uh, device. Um, but also uh, another is um, uh, to, to, uh, to, 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 to be brave and, and, and to try out new things um, and to challenge oneself rather than just to always um, go to the same diner, uh, see the same things, have the same conversations. We, we, we need freshness, we need vigor, we need the, the, the life, uh, life spontaneity, freshness. Um, and this again rejuvenates us um, and we need to do things that we love to do. So those listening to this, Howard, if I was to say, well, what do you really love about life? And it may be spending time with children. Um, so when did you last have a family meal where they weren't all on these infernal things? Um, uh, when did you last um, uh, spend a, a, a day together out in the countryside where you got back to, to playing the games and having that spontaneity? Uh, is it music that you love? Um, and if I say, well, you know, well, someone says you love painting uh, uh, or you love making music or love uh, acting that, and, and we say well why don't you do it and the answer comes back well there's not time uh, and, and in my life and the answer is make the time simply make the time because happier people get better and better about utilizing the time they have so Howard I mean there are a whole number of things that you know, it's like languages and indeed maths and probably electromagnetism too. How the earlier you learn these good habits, uh, the more embedded they become. Conversely, the more you learn the habits of, uh, of uh, being critical, uh, abusing the body, uh, being dishonest, um, uh, being uh, stale uh, and uh, undermining other people, uh, the more ingrained and they, they become in, in our whole uh, habitual responses. Thank you. Uh, and I'm certainly expressing gratitude, not only for this session, but to the, that whole positive psychology center and the community that's around it now globally, because I'm learning so much uh, as I'm studying my own interests, being a part of this has been, uh, has been terrific. We actually have Lori Santos. Uh, it, we're going to be have a nice conversation with her as well and others. So um, let me briefly uh, say thank you uh, for, for this, but I'll ask you to just hang on with us for about a minute um, right afterwards. So thank you very much. on-demand episodes, and more, visit our website. Kids on Earth contains hundreds of video interviews with students from around the world. Learning Revolution is a global collaboration network for people who care about learning. Be sure to join us next Thursday for a new episode of Reinventing School. Thanks for watching.